Hello coin collectors out there. Welcome back to the Big D Coins channel. Hopefully everyone is having a great day as always. In today's video, we are going to look at this coin right here, the 1967 Roosevelt dime. And behind this little folder, which I'll open up, we have a 1996 W Roosevelt dime. Now this is a special video because this is the highest mintage coin in the entire Roosevelt dime series and behind it in this envelope is the lowest mintage Roosevelt dime in the entire series. The lowest mintage Roosevelt dime was part of the 50th anniversary of the Roosevelt dime that came out in the 1996 uh, uncirculated mint set that I've made some other videos about as well. But first let's talk about these three coins right here and here's a preview of the coin that we're going to look at this one right here. In the video, we'll talk about the value of the 1967 Roosevelt dime and compare that to the value of the 1996 West Point dime. Some very interesting stuff. Now, 1965 started out as a very interesting year for coin collectors because of the Coinage Act of 1965. The main part of that Coinage Act took out the silver from coins. It took them out from the dimes, the quarters, uh, the half dollars maintained their silver up until 1970, um, but the 1965 dime was the first one that didn't have any silver in it. Now, I should mention that these coins that we have going forward now are 75% copper, 25% nickel over a pure copper center. I was kind of pronouncing that uh, wrong in some of my earlier videos. I thought the whole kind of coin was 75% copper, 25% nickel, but that mixture there of 75% copper and 25% nickel is actually just kind of the upper layer of the coin, just the top layer of the coin. The center of the coin is actually actually a pure copper center to it. So just to clarify that uh, from my earlier videos in which I was getting it slightly wrong. Now the mintage for these three years, it's kind of astonishing. We've got 1.6 billion that were produced for 1965. 1.3 billion that were produced for 1966 and 2.4 billion that were made for 1967. So billion, billion, two billion as far as the mintage of these coins. Now the 1996 W, that gets really exciting because here's a little preview of it. 1996, we've got the W mint mark right there. There are only 1,457,000 of those that were produced. Some other aspects of the Coinage Act of 1965, uh, we mentioned that they took the silver out. They also removed the mint marks for these three years. Now that was reinstated starting in 1968, but for 65, 66, and 67, you won't see any mint marks on your coin. They did that because they wanted to increase the population of the coins that was in circulation. They were worried that people were uh, hoarding these coins and taking out specific coins that had mint marks because they were trying to build sets of those coins. So by not putting any mint marks on them, they figured that they could kind of uh, boost up the population of the coins that were actually going around in circulation. Another aspect of the Coinage Act of 1965 is that they only made special mint sets from 65, 66, and 67. So that means that there were no proof or mint sets that were made. There were just these quote unquote special mint sets, which had a better quality finish to them. However, they weren't like the proof finish uh, that we you know, know with the uh, proof coins. So that's the Coinage Act of 1965. It made some very high mintage coins that aren't worth too much. At a mint state 65, these are going to be worth $2.50. $2.25 and these are $2 right here. So $2.50, $2, uh, excuse me, $2.50, $2.25 and $2. Now to get your coin graded mint state 65, uh, you'd have to have a very great uh, condition coin, which we can get into a little bit later uh, in the video. Now let's introduce the other coin that we're focusing on in today's video. This one right here, the 1996 West Point Mint Roosevelt Dime. Compared to the other coins that we're looking at earlier, this is going to be worth a lot more money in a mint state 65 condition. In fact, this is going to be worth $20 in a mint state 65 condition. Uh, 
which is very nice right here. And it'll be worth even more if you have the full bands or the full torch designation, which we'll talk about. Uh, here are some of the accolades associated with Roosevelt. Uh, during his presidency, um, there was a bunch of factory closings, farm foreclosures, farm foreclosures, bank failures, and unemployment. But he helped kind of introduce the New Deal legislation, which established the Works Project Administration and the Social Security Act. So that was his kind of contributions to the United States. He also was the president during the Pearl Harbor attack. And he said N December 7th, 1941 was a date which will live in infamy. So that's a, a very famous uh, saying. Um, so he was the president during the Pearl Harbor and he helped establish the American, work American uh, Works Project Administration and the Social Security Act. So very nice work by him. And of course, the Roosevelt dime started uh, 50 years prior to this in 1946, the year after he passed away uh, from complications due to polio, I believe. All right, now let's flip it over and we'll talk about the reverse design. The reverse design is always a very important place to look when you're looking at Roosevelt dimes because what you want to look for is the full bands or the full torch designation. In 2003, PCGS and NGC uh, started using these designations. Full bands, PCGS, is that's the PCGS version, version that they use. And they define that as... Uh, requires both the upper right here and the lower bands to be um, to excuse me the full full upper and the lower bands to appear distinct in full separation there needs to be a line I'm going to move the camera a little so it uh, it's not shaking around as much there needs to be a line dividing the band uh, that's full and unbroken so we can see on the top right here this has a full band going across but it doesn't really have a full band. Sorry, trying to get the lighting as good as possible given that it's behind the plastic. It doesn't really have a full uh, separation in this band at the bottom, which doesn't have anything to do with the wear and tear of the coin in circulation. As you can see, it's uncirculated. However, it just wasn't fully struck to the best it could have been during the mint process. So PCGS uses the full bands designation, NGC, uh, started in 2003 using the full torch designation. So their criteria is somewhat actually more difficult and more strict than the PCGS because they require the upper and the lower part of the horizontal bands to be fully separated, just like uh, PCGS, but they also require the vertical lines of the torch must be fully defined. So we see uh, vertical lines as well. So PCGS is saying that in addition to both the upper and the lower, uh, band being separated the torch itself all of the lines going up and down it need to be fully defined So that will get you the full bands or their full torch designation Depending on which coin grading agency you go to to get your coin graded Now let's talk about the value of these we mentioned that at a mint state 65 uh, These would be worth about $20. You can go even higher PCGS has sold some uh, people have sold some that have been graded at mint state 68 by PCGS, and those have been selling for around 50 to 60, even one sold for $132. PCGS has graded seven of them at a mint state 69, so these are the ones of these are the ones without the full band designation, but they've graded seven of them at a mint state 69, and those have a estimated price guide of $400. However, none of them have actually been sold. Now let's compare that to the 1967 and see what the values on those are. So at a uh, mint state 68, we had PC, we had the 1996 valued at $65. Mint state 68 for actually for this one right here, it's actually valued at $400. That's kind of surprising. So these ones on the lower end are worth less but are worth less than the 1996, but on the higher end, they're actually worth more. Um, that can probably be attributed to the fact that not many of these uh, were held onto and survived kind of the, cir the circulation process. So the 1996, these were sold directly to um, coin collectors. So coin collectors probably took them in the envelope that you see right here in the plastic 
and sent them right to PCGS or NGC to get them graded versus these ones, uh, you would have to pull them out of circulation or from a coin roll that you got from your bank and then send it to them. So fewer of these have survived at a mint state 68, but there are many, many, many uh, that have that are still out there in the uh, circulated condition like we see right here. If we look at the reverse side, uh, the bands on the torch and the lines on the torch are fully obliterated. We can see that the uh, outside lettering is starting to mend with the uh, rim a little bit. So unfortunately, this coin is only going to be worth face value, uh, not even close to that mint state circulation. All right, everyone, that's all the info that I've got for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at this 67. We looked at a 66, we had a 65 as well, but the main focus was on the 1996 and the 1967 Roosevelt time. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Enjoy and best of luck coin collecting out there. Take care.